welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, February 14th, 2021. We're glad that you uh, decided to visit with us this Sunday. Also, I want a, a word of thanks to all of those persons of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church and beyond who have sent correspondence, communication to my family and I. We are doing better. We are recovering from the COVID. Right now, we're just praying that Debbie, my wife, does not get it. So thank you to everybody who communicated to us their prayers, their thoughts, and their well wishes. We will continue our worship with the ringing of the singing bowl, as that helps us draw our thoughts and our prayers to this special time. We continue with the invocation. The light of our Savior is with you all. And also with you. The light of God is shining. Shining around and within. The voice of God is calling. Calling not just from ancient texts, but from here and now. The love of God is with us. Flowing around us and within us. Stay with us, Creator God. Live in us, Jesus Christ. Abide in us, Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the confession and forgiveness by making the sign of the cross, remembering our baptismal covenant. Jesus Christ, God's glory and love shone through you that day on the mountain, and you persisted in revealing that glory and love through your words and deeds, through your life of humble service. We hear again these wonderful words of God. You are my son, the beloved. Listen to him. If we conceal your love, because our pursuit of other priorities prevents us from seeing and serving people in need. Forgive us, God. If we conceal your glory, because all we reflect is our own self-centeredness. Forgive us, Creator. If we conceal your justice through our failure to empower those who are powerless. Forgive us, Savior. If we conceal your mercy, because of our hard and unforgiving attitudes. Forgive us, Christ. If we conceal your compassion because of our prejudice and intolerance. Forgive us, healer. Let us spend some time in silent reflection. It is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The good news that we are not only enlightened by our belief in Christ, we are cleansed and we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We continue with the litany. God of our mountaintops. Give us gravity. God of our valleys. Give us perspective. God of our peaks. Give us stillness. God of our depths. Give us footsteps forward. God of the whole creation. Give us community. God with us, us with God with us in our restlessness and wakefulness. Give us your rest. God in our living and God in our dying. God in our laughter and God in our weeping. God in our fear and God in our joy. God in our doubting and God in our praise. God, we come today holding much heaviness in our hearts. And we come with full hearts of love. We hold all things to you, confident that you are already present in the darkest corners and in the brightest light. Move your Holy Spirit over us in thought, word, and deed. In Christ's name, amen. Let us pray the prayer of the day. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the introduction to the word. Listen for God speaks, calling out to the earth. 
Speaking for all to hear. The reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Mark's Gospel presents the transfiguration as a preview of what would become apparent to Jesus' followers after he rose from the dead. Confused di disciples are given a vision of God's glory manifest in the beloved Son. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth bleached them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had arisen from the dead. Here ends the reading. The light of God is shining. The word of God is speaking. In this time of silence, may we look within and listen deeply. For the presence of God in our midst. Hey, it's that time again. It's children's time, so come on, gather around the screen, grab some popcorn and candy if you want, or, or uh, a nutritionist snack of some type. So I got to thinking, you know what? It has been a while since we were together. I am so glad that we're together now. Hope you're staying safe and healthy. I also started thinking something else. What happens if you got up this morning and you went outside and you noticed that the sun wasn't up, S-U-N? Well, you might go back inside because you can't see. It's not easy to see, so you might get a flashlight. And then if it stayed for a while, you might even go back inside and put on some warmer clothing because it's cold. And then I started thinking, what happens if, let's just say, the sun doesn't shine for a few days, weeks, months? Well, plants would start dying, and there'd be this huge global effect on all of creation. I started thinking of something else. Today is Transfiguration Sunday. This is the day that Jesus went up on a mountain with some of his disciples, and while he was there, God spoke from a cloud and said, this is my beloved Listen to him. And Jesus then, his whole body began to emulate light. Wow. Wow. You know what I also started thinking? Is the sun, S-U-N, is a lot like the sun, S-O-N, of God. God's love warms us. God's love lights our path. God's love keeps us healthy. It's important that we be surrounded, supported, bathed in the light of God. It's important. So what I'd love for you to do today is go outside at some point and just stand and feel the sun on your skin, on your face. And then look at all of the things that you are able to see that grow, blossom, continue to live because of the sun. And then start thinking also about the Son of God, S-O-N of God, Jesus Christ, and how important Jesus is in our lives. Give thanks for the S-U-N and give thanks for the child of God, Jesus Christ. All right, I'll see you next week. Take care, bye. A Lutheran pastor decided that a visual demonstration would add emphasis to her Bible study. So she placed four worms in four separate jars. The first worm was placed into a jar containing alcohol. The second worm was placed into a container with cigarette smoke. The third worm was placed into a container of chocolate syrup. The fourth and final worm was placed into a container of good, clean soil. Midway through her Bible study, she reported to the class the following results. First worm in alcohol, dead. Second worm in cigarette smoke, dead. Third worm in chocolate syrup, dead. Fourth worm in good, clean soil, alive. 
So she asked her class, what did we learn from this demonstration? A lovely, wonderful woman sitting in the back quickly raised her hand and said, as long as you drink, smoke, and eat chocolate, you won't have worms. Well, it pretty much ended the Bible study. Have you ever been in a group of people where someone told a joke and everyone laughed except you? I don't get it. I missed the point. Or have you ever been in the middle of a discussion where another person makes a persuasive point and everyone nods their heads in agreement except you? I, I don't get it. I missed the point. That's sometimes how it is with life. Sometimes we miss the point of it. Sometimes life just doesn't make any sense. We experience disappointment or our days are filled with meaningless activity or we are faced with crisis upon crisis and sometimes we just can't figure it out. We miss the point. Like when we miss the point of a joke or we feel we've been missing out on all the fun. What's the sense of it all? That can happen in our faith journey as well. We can sometimes feel like there is no joy in being a follower of Jesus because we just can't make sense of what it's all about. We miss the point of what discipleship is. We miss the point of what it means to be a child of God in our life and faith journey. Now, today's gospel story, the story of the transfiguration of Jesus, kind of and really is a similar experience. Jesus took Peter, James, and John to the top of the mountain, evidently to give them a special revelation of who he was. Perhaps it was even to confirm the confession that Peter had made for the other disciples earlier in the week. You know, if you go and read uh, Mark chapter 8, verse 29, Jesus asked the disciples, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered Jesus, you are the Messiah. Perhaps it was to prepare them for the events of Jesus' suffering and death, which lay ahead. Whatever the reason, Peter and his companions completely missed the point of the experience, which I will point out to you, by the way, is really a theme that runs throughout all Mark's gospel. It seems that every time Jesus teaches or heals or tells parables, uh, the disciples just don't get it. Jesus' messiahship was not understood by those closest to him. I want to get back to the top of the mountain. For those of us not steeped in the Jewish tradition, we really can't perhaps grasp and understand how dramatic that mountaintop experience was for those three disciples. Moses and Elijah were two of the great heroes of the Jewish faith. It was like almost having a, a ringside seat to heaven. Reminds me of all the talk since last Sunday regarding whether Tom Brady is a GOAT, greatest of all time. I mean, is it Tom Brady or is it LeBron? Is it Jordan? Is it Ali? Is it uh, Gretzky? Is it Mia Hamm? Is it Serena Williams? I mean, who are the greatest of all times in the professional sports world? Perhaps for those of us not necessarily locked into all of the dynamics and the inner workings of sports, perhaps we can take that GOAT debate to jeopardy. I mean, is it Ken Jennings, James Holzhauer, James Hol Brad Rutter? I mean, who's the greatest jeopardy of all times? No matter what, imagine if you will, some of the greatest in an area, in an, in an, in a passion that, of, of, of an area or a study that you appreciate, technology, science, perhaps the greatest in the arts, perhaps the greatest in the entertainment, perhaps the greatest in the humanities, those persons all in the same place with you. I mean, that's, that's the kind of drama it was for those disciples. And Peter, well, he misses the point. He says, Jesus, I mean, this is really great what we're experiencing. I mean, Jesus, this is quite a show. Rabbi, let's build some tents, you know, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. I mean, Jesus was giving them a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and Peter wants to make something permanent. I mean, he wants to put up tents uh, so that the show could keep on going, for the experience could be canned, limited by that time and that space. He's missing the point. He's missing the point. 
that this is a special experience that was not intended to be repeated. Okay? And it's not much different for us 2,000 years later. I mean, we want to, you and I, our culture, our society, our system, we want to institutionalize the dramatic so that we can use it whenever we want as a spiritual kind of shot in the arm, right? When we get bored or when we see life seems mundane, we want to go to that building, that tent, that structure, that kind of, and say, well, this is a, this is a canned experience of God. We build tents out of tradition. So we can contain Jesus. We can try to contain God. So then later, at our own choosing, we'll sit back and enjoy the show. And there are some Christians who even insist that dramatic experiences, mountaintop experiences, are the norm. And if you haven't had one on a regular basis, well, you must not be truly a follower of God. Notice that Jesus doesn't. Do what Peter asks. He doesn't respond to their attempts to want to build a tent. Right? That's because Jesus knew that even greater things were going to happen that would reveal the magnificence. There were even going to be greater things that would reveal the power, the love, the glory of God. Later there would be even more dramatic. Now, that's where Moses and Elijah fit into our story in even a greater way. Each of these persons of faith in Hebrew scripture had an experience of the magnificence, had an experience directly of the power and the love of God that became important to the whole community. Moses' experience took place on top of a mountain, Mount Sinai, where God gave the Ten Commandments, right? And on that lightning, and on that mountain, lightning flash, thunder roll, the whole mountain was covered with the fiery glory of God. It was so intense that Moses couldn't even look at it directly. And when he came down, do you remember what the Hebrew, what the Israelites said? His face literally, his face glowed. Because he, even in an indirect way, encountered, witnessed, experienced the glory of God, the power of God. Remember Elijah? If you don't, go back and read some of the story. I'll summarize some of it now for those of you who might not recall it. But remember Elijah the prophet? Remember he was discouraged because he thought he was the only one in Israel still worshiping the one true God? Do you remember the story? And so God set up, up on a mountaintop, remember, and God had arranged that there was going to be a contest between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And remember, the prophets of Baal set up their altars. They set up their sacrifices. They prayed to their God to bring down fire for the burnt offerings, and nothing happened. Do you remember? So Elijah, he waits until later in the day, and Elijah sets up the altar. And just to prove the power of God, he douses it with water, and he prays to God, to Yahweh. He prays that Yahweh's glory, that Yahweh's power would be revealed. Do you remember? Do you recall it? Sending fire from heaven, and God, Yahweh, sends fire, and it burns the offering. It burns the whole sto stone altar. doesn't matter if it was doused in water. Didn't Everything was literally engulfed with flames. And Elijah showed just a sample of the power of God. Well, Jesus, at that moment on the mountaintop of Transfiguration Sunday, was setting the stage for the greatest revelation of God's gift and God's glory. A revelation not through human beings like Moses and Elijah, but through a human being, what's, she, what's God say? This is my beloved son. God comes directly into the midst of our lives. Not through a law given to Moses. Not through words uttered by a prophet. But through a human being. This is, is not God from a distance. 
as the song says. No, this is God in the flesh here and now. That's the God who Jesus Christ is. And when the, the disciples try to contain, the vision disappears. Jesus leads them down from the mountain toward the greatest vision, towards the greatest sign of God's glory, of God's love yet to come. Jesus goes down from that mountain and shows us that vision in a cross and in an empty tomb, a rugged cross and a rough-hewn grave. That's the true glory of God. And you know what we say, wait, 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 there must be some mistake because glory is supposed to be, you know, glorious. Glory is supposed to be spectacular. Glory is supposed to be magnificent. And the cross and the tomb are none of those. The cross and the tomb, they're marks of a suffering servant who gave his life for all of creation. I'm going to make... A long story short, the disciples, they don't get it until Pentecost, until the coming of the Holy Spirit. That's when they get the point. That's when the purpose of their lives takes on a whole new dimension. That's when they start doing things that Jesus did. That's when they start teaching and healing and forgiving. That's when they realize what the life of Christ was all about. And they began telling the story of who Jesus was. No longer, they're no longer hidden in a room. They're out in the world, witnessing, proclaiming God incarnate in the world. The purpose of, of our faith journeys isn't to be spectacular. No. What we are to do as children of God is we are to go into the world proclaiming, reconciling, listening. That spirit that comes in baptism, that spirit that feeds us with the Eucharist, that spirit that calls us to reflect God's glory in our lives. Well, I got to be honest with you. At this point, you're probably thinking, I don't always feel that. I'm reflecting God's glory and love and grace in the world. I'm not always loving and forgiving. I have doubts. I have fears. I have questions. I have failings. I have shortcomings. Well, that's what's so great about this story as well. We don't have to be discouraged. Jesus Christ understands. Jesus didn't leave the disciples when they didn't get it. Instead, he continued to teach, to instruct, to inspire, to forgive. Jesus is not only our example, but Jesus Christ gives us the power to follow. The cross, the empty tomb, those times when we feel we're failing are not, because the cross and empty tomb reflect the glory and the power of God's love. So, you know what? Let's not build a tent. Let's not try to contain God. Instead, let's continue to reflect God in the places where we live, work, and play. Amen. And go reflecting the light of God in the world. We continue with the invitation to the offering. Come into Christ's light with your gifts. They need not be gold or precious oil. Gifts of love and compassion are the greatest treasures of all.
Let us respond with the offertory prayer, God of light and love. Shine through the gifts we bring before you now. Speak through our hearts and our actions. Bless our gifts, our offerings, and our very lives, that we may bless others with your presence. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of the church. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith and far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark earth and ocean deep, mountains, clouds, and storms, and creatures seen and unseen, and for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all who suffer this day that Christ, our healer, transforms sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Hear now the prayers of our hearts, said silently your love. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins, as we forgive, we forgive those who sin against us. Save, save us from the time, time of trial, and, and deliver us from evil. evil. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory the are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Before we have our closing word of dismissal and benediction, we once again want to thank you for spending some time with us at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Fremont, California. And we look forward to you joining with us again next week. Don't forget also that we do have Ash Wednesday Live Zoom coming up. So please check our website for more information. And now words for your journey. May God now send us back down the mountain of our worship. We have been changed. We can't be silent anymore. We have seen the light of the world. Go and share the radiance of love. We go with grace. We conclude with a dismissal. Go in peace. Share the light of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.